Hello, everyone. Hello. I can see that we still have a few people getting in. Let's give it um, a couple of minutes. I'll remind you that uh, this webinar series is about making things alive, which is what we like to do at Invisible, making things alive, okay? With printed electronics, that's an important part of how we do it. Behind me is actually a screen printer that we use here in Portugal. I'm talking to you from Portugal, from Invisible's facilities in Portugal. Let's just wait a few more seconds to officially kick it off. This is actually our um, customer solutions center here where uh, we have everything that's needed to develop great new products uh, with great new form factors that are enabled by printed electronics technologies. And this is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, shall we kick it off then officially? Here we go. Um, so this webinar series, welcome everyone. This webinar series is about making things alive with printed electronics technologies. My name is Inej Eriks. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Invisible. I have been with the company since its very start 10 years ago. Um, and uh, today we have our fourth webinar in this series. Uh, we'll be focusing, as I said previously, on uh, printed electronic systems, integrated systems, and, that, and how they can help um, enable new form factors in new products. As some of you might know, oh, I'm sorry, I was in the wrong slide. Okay, this was the title slide. As you may know, uh, Invisible is a listed company. Invisible Interactive Inc. is a listed company on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture List. And this is why we need to make always our audiences aware that there might be some forward-looking statements uh, in the presentations that you're going to see today. At Invisible, about Invisible, well, first of all, I have to say I'm very happy to ho be hosting this, the webinar today because uh, our previous webinars have had a huge impact, uh, hundreds of attendees, over 1,200 views on YouTube, and we feel that together we are creating and contributing to making this community around printed electronics stronger. So thank you all for being here today again and creating this joint experience with us. So in terms of what we do uh, at Invisible, and to, to summarize, we really offer a full package of services from idea to prototyping to high volume production. And as I said, this customer solution center here in uh, Portugal is mainly dedicated to develop, design, and prototype new product ideas, integrating different printed electronic technologies, but of course, our own printed electronic electrochromic displays, okay? But then we have other facilities where we have roll-to-roll -roll production, so production uh, in higher volumes, and where we can also help other companies from this space print their own technologies and components. And this is uh, very relevant for the topic of today, which is printed systems. And, and so that roll-to-roll -roll production line also can help us jumpstart the production of those integrated systems with different technologies on the same substrate, for example. In terms of our agenda today, we have a great um, group of speakers, and I'm sure we have an interesting audience as well. Um, and we're going to start with Bjorn Norberg from RISE, uh, then Carolina Josio from Evanik, and Tommy Hoglum from uh, Invisible, our VP of Sales and Marketing, will join us later. A few, uh, a few housekeeping topics. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So uh, this will be live you can actually go to the bottom of your screen to the ask a question feature and type your questions there. We will answer them 
as we go or at the end at this Q&A session. Also, um, I would like to remind you that today's webinar is being recorded. It will be made available on YouTube and other social media. Um, and really, I'd like to also encourage you to, to share it within your social media networks as well. That would, I think, would be great for us and, and for your networks as well. So um, let's finally kick things off by welcoming today's first speaker, Björn Norberg from RISE, Research Institutes of Sweden. And really RISE, I have to say, was a pioneering, pioneering research institute in, in the area of printed electronic systems and, and printed electrochromic displays. So RISE is actually one of the reasons that we are particularly happy at Invisible to be part of the Swedish ecosystem in, in this field. Bjorn will be talking about printed electronic systems from the perspective of the printed electronics arena, uh, an innovation cluster uh, in Sweden. Over to you, Bjorn. Thank you so much. Um, let's see if I can share them. <clears throat> like this, maybe. Does it look all right for you? And great. So, hello everybody. Um, thank you for having me. I, I've been invited to talk about perspectives. It's a little high flying, I think. Um, I'm gonna change that directly into illustrations. I'm gonna show a little bit what we do, uh, just to showcase what's what's happening in this in this field. So, uh, quickly, I'm a business developer at Rise, and um, let's see if I can advance this. So, Rise. Um, is a Swedish institute. Um, we are roughly 2,800 people with a, around 130 different test beds and then of course the printed electronic, electronics arena is one of them. Um, this is an innovation cluster based in Norrköping and um, <clears throat> um, for those who are not aware where this is it's very close to the North Pole. <laughs> so um, we're up here uh, one hour south of Stockholm and uh, summertime like now in June you might even surf in the middle of town if you have if you happen to have a surfboard which is electric of course. Now the innovation cluster uh, um, is actually a combination of academic research at the University of Linköping where you have around 150 uh, postdocs uh, PhDs in chemistry doing work in organic electronics and downstream you have um, all kinds of clients. We, we tend to clients from everywhere in the world. They can be small uh, inventors and also multinationals and our position is to be in the middle uh, bridging the gap between academy and industry. Um, looking at the academic side there's uh, chemistry labs uh, scientists working into taming the ionic properties of conducting polymers into plants, also research into cellulose. Um, in this case, you have a cellulose, a nanofibrillated cellulose, which is doped with conducting polymer, and all of a sudden you have a black paper that can store electricity. Um, quickly zooming out again, um, the RFID labels are printed and they are made in the 20 billions globally a year. Um, the glucose strip test to the left, uh, where you leave a little drop of blood to test your blood sugar level, also made in the billions. But the inter interesting thing is that they are actually made by means of screen printing. Now at the PIA, we are um, working with all these dimensions, both the chemical side of things, but also the manufacturing prototyping. Um, and we mostly work with uh, screen printing and ink jetting. We have a whole bunch of different machines to help us. Uh, and then we are typically working with prototyping, early stage prototyping rather than series manufacturing. So um, it might look like this on an ordinary day. Where we combine um, flexible materials, conducting polymers and also then um, conventional electronics into different types of systems to address whatever need the client have has. Um, 
So here's an example where we're actually mounting a hard electronics onto textile, which will then form a sock. I'll show you an image in a second. Here's an example of how we're trying out the um, cycling of, of P dots or conducting polymers with different temperature um, settings. And one of the key things for us is that we are totally technology agnostic. We are independent. We, we use whatever is needed, whatever technology is available on the market to, to help the clients. Um, one field, uh, one example are, are piezo-sensitive polymers. Uh, you can see the gray dots here. Uh, they are printed, screen printed sensors mounted uh, onto a sole of a horse um, or under the horseshoe. And then this little system might be used to detect if the horse is having a problem walking, trotting, if there's a lilt, if there's some kind of injury to the horse. Another field which is uh, moving quite fast is different types of substrates uh, and inks that are stretchable, which will allow for new types of form factors and new types of systems that might be used uh, in conjunction with the human body, in the body, on the body, uh, potentially also biocompatible. Um, and to the right, you see the sock I mentioned just a second ago. It's a sock that might be used to detect leg swelling, which is coupled to edema and maybe heart problems. Uh, so potentially the sensor might respond to leg swelling and then also address medi medication. Uh, in, in case you're about to have a heart attack because you know, for various reasons you have you have a poor heart you've had cancer surgery etc uh, the little ion pump is an electrophoretic device which might be implantable to very specifically deliver drugs to specific areas in the body and in combination you can, can take all these sensors put them on the body inside the body and create networks and uh, we are flying high, we're aiming very, very high. Uh, in this case, we're looking at treating epilepsy or ideally um, detecting uh, some kind of marker before the seizure happens. So another field, uh, passive sensors. In this case, it's a passive humidity sensor, uh, which might be used to um, install in ho inside houses and you have a little scanner that can detect uh, uh, the, this little radio antenna uh, and then see if the sensor has been exposed to humidity or not and, and thus you can um, tell if the house, uh, if there's a risk for mold build for instance. The same type of technology looking for humidity in a bandage. Uh, you don't want to change a bandage too early and not too late. Uh, and, and there's a combination of a passive printed humidity sensor and an electrochromic display, very much like the ones we are using together with Invisible Then, passive system um, to say that the bandage needs to be changed. Now, moving towards the field where we're collaborating with, with Invisible is electrochromism, of course. Uh, we have a little patent portfolio um, around the inks and, and formulations and also the different buildups. Uh, and as you may know, electrochromism is, means literally that you change the chroma with the electro, you change in color with electric current. And that is used, for instance, in, in some of the aircraft windows and also in rear view mirrors and cars. Uh, so this is a very important field for us. Looking at the little displays, uh, they are low power, poss possible to produce in roll to roll and then upscaling. Um, for instance, together with Invisible, which is a, is a great, uh, great partner for us. Um, we also do this manually, very, very manual trials, but we can also go into automated production. And we try every dimension of these displays and testing and also miniaturization. In this case, you have a little printed transistors. There's actually a world record there. And uh, looking here, we have a uh, copper print, a very, very high resolution copper print. Uh, you can see down right, it says 100 micrometers. So it's very, very high resolution printing we're talking about. And uh, 
with a few transistors. If you look at any kind of smartphone, you'll have several billion, even 400 billion transistors in all your memories, but this is like 120. So <laughs> with some perspective, this is not a lot of transistors, but that might be sufficient to drive a few segments of a display. And there's no need for actual uh, integrated circuits based on silicon. Um, these transistors um, also can act as sensors. So organic electrochemical transistors can both amplify a chemical signal and also detect something, some kind of marker. Um, and they can take different forms. And in this, just as an example, it's been trialed to use as a lactate uh, biosensor. So combining these technologies, we can create little systems or small, small or big as you please. And mounting uh, conventional chips on top of this, we may add computational power um, into smart systems that can detect things. Uh, there, here's one example, which is a temperature logger. You have a conventional chip from NXP, uh, which can then store roughly 8,000 data points. And in this case, we're addressing the cold chain for vaccine monitoring. Uh, several consecutive R&D projects together with the Doctors Without Borders and financed by the Swedish Innovation Agency. So this little label is a very smart log logger in a very small form uh, with an uh, onboard display to indicate if the vaccine has gone bad or is still good. Um, another example here would be um, a bit more futuristic, um, a platform that's take, looking for drugs of abuse in saliva. It's actually based on nanocellulose uh, substrate. Um, very, very futuristic, but a beautiful concept. Now, we're also playing around a little bit with color on the database. Uh, we're having a steep learning curve right now, um, still, uh, still, still dabbling a bit, trying to master the color systems, uh, trying things to see if we can achieve uh, color combination and form combinations in a way that we can, um, well, again, expand the use for, for electrochromic displays, really. So, uh, final picture, one other example, one uh, field is also how to make these displays smarter, more operational, potentially substituting uh, LCDs. So, electronic shelf labels or liquid crystal displays of all kinds might in the future be completely substituted by this technology if we, if we can keep them in this direction. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bjorn. Um, let me go back here. Can you see my screen? Yes, good, okay. So that's really impressive, thank you again. Um, the, as we could, could see, the possibilities are endless and uh, one can only imagine the amount of work, creativity and know-how that is behind those developments, thank you. And now we really, after we've seen those, all those possibilities, uh, we're going to shift uh, from an integrated systems perspective into one key component in any system, which is the power source. Um, and that is a critical component because it's needed for the, the, the other components to really work and, and the final solution to really work. So Carolina Giorgio from uh, Evoni Creavis is joining us for, uh, for this second presentation. We're very happy to welcome Ivanik into this webinar series. Um, as we have just uh, two days ago uh, released a collaboration with Ivanik in, in, in printed electronics and how to integrate our two technologies together. So um, I, I will pass it over to Carolina to talk to us about tattoos, the next thin thing. I can actually show you a little bit of what she's going to talk about next. Uh, but to you now, Carolina, you know much more about this than me. <laughs> well, 
Well, hello everybody. Good afternoon. Carolina Giosio, as Ines already introduced me. Uh, I am the marketing manager for Tattoos. I have a quite long time working in the chemical industry and with Evonik. And I am absolutely uh, happy to be here today and introduce our latest uh, developments in our printable battery technology. So I hope you are seeing my screen. I'm sorry that it doesn't move. Okay, there we go. So um, Tattoos is a development from Evonik. Evonik is a world leading specialty chemical company originally based in Germany. I am today here talking from Germany, from Mal, where we have our uh, strategic innovation unit and our technology center. And at Evonik, we believe no product is so perfect that you can't improve it. So we help tires be more fuel efficient, and we make mattresses more bouncier, and we make tablets more effective. And this is uh, what specialty chemicals is about. And that's our core expertise. We have 80% of the sales from leading market positions. And we are over 32,000 employees with 101 nationalities. So this gives also a perspective on the degree of internationalization and globalization that Evonik offers, also for a person like me. Uh, and as I said, uh, Tattoos is a development from Creavis, which is the um, innovation unit for Evonik. And what we do at Creavis is push Evonik growth and sustainability by mid and long-term innovation. We do this by developing new competencies for Evonik, also by attracting and developing talents for Evonik. So maybe today we have somebody in the audience that gets interested. And with this, we also foster open innovation. And you see the picture we are, we are exactly sitting today. So, but uh, years back, uh, we identify the Internet of Things development and that this would have a profound impact in our daily lives. So electronics pervading our lives, everyday objects becoming energy autonomous, edge computing expanding, wireless sensor networks developing. And we thought, oh, this really represents a big growth opportunity. And also considering all the uh, communication that is then further on enabled. So to make this uh, communication active, the battery has a very big influence. And the form factor of the battery, when we look at today's smart devices, still has a big influence on the device design. So device designers and manufacturers stretch their creativity to the edge to get over the form restrictions imposed by batteries and their materials. The pre-designed and rigid form of relatively thick existing solutions means that flexibility, true flexibility, can only be achieved beyond the borders of the battery. And so we see the device design typically made around these predefined forms. So compromises in design are made because of the battery shape. And the function still prevails over the design to achieve performance. However, an appealing design is a strong value driver for smart devices. And companies are permanently looking for flexibility of usage and design freedom properties. So our technology is based on redox polymers, which are the active materials for our organic batteries technology. In the past, 
polymers which were used as active materials were not really successful because the backbone charge uh, was injected. And these conjugated polymers didn't have or didn't offer a defined potential. They had, because of this backbone charge injection, the poor polymer stability, and also an intrinsic conductivity. And on top, there were all, also some challenging issues with the synthesis processes. But modern uh, science puts polymers back on the spotlight, and researchers have focused now more on redox polymers rather than the previous ones. Redox polymers have a defined potential, have a much better polymer stability, and have no intrinsic conductivity, which makes them much more suitable for the formulation of organic polymer batteries. So as I said, organic polymer batteries is our uh, intrinsic technology, but tattoos is a combination of materials and technology. We offer a comprehensive product portfolio. So we have anode, cathode, and electrolyte. We have focused our development in water-based formulations, which are polymer-based and metal-free. This means there are not toxic components in our materials. And we develop a unique uv cured solid state electrolyte, which means our batteries are absolutely solid. The technology at the moment we are focusing is screen printing, and the design rules allow for a variable geometry. Our slurries are easy to handle with this technology. There is no need for a protective atmosphere. And there is also no special printing equipment needed. So either sheet-based or roll-to-roll work. With these tattoos enables a new battery concept, an ultra-thin and flexible battery. This allows for a seamless integration of the battery into the device with a very broad versatility of substrates and synergies in components. So this offers the possibility of joint device encapsulation. There are also different cell concepts available. And these are, as I said, true solid state battery cells. And in the picture, you can see one of our last trials in our lab here. But tattoos also leverages on the sustainability profile of the devices it powers. Because with tattoos, you get energy storage without metals. It's an all solid state solution, including the electrolyte, which means there are no leakages and the problems that this brings. And because these are the new materials, there is no special disposal process needed. So when you use tattoos in a smart device, which you want to finally use in supply chains, so they are more efficient, because you can optimize the resource utilization and also, this offers the possibility to reduce the food waste. On the other side, ubiquitous sensors increase safety and security, improve the comfort of living and working, and reduce the energy consumption. Also, innovative wearable devices improve personal health and well-being but not only uh, on the human perspective, but also, for instance, for cattle or farming. So with tattoos, we offer a full broad spectrum of applications. And for instance, in the area of logistics and retails where disposable batteries generate waste, those often contain substances 
harmful to people and the environment. No matter what kind of device uh, you manufacture or product, sell or transport, the smart packaging makes supply chains efficient and dynamic, reduce the loss of goods, enhance the point of sale experience, and minimize the effects of accidental misuse. Active labels, for instance, powered with tattoos, allow for track and trace solutions on single pack level. When we look at the opportunities in health and well-being, from medical diagnostics to fitness monitoring, and the needs of tomorrow's healthy society, you can reduce healthcare costs, speed up convalescence, enhance patient comfort, extend the reach of e-health and the points of care, and expand personalized medicine. And replacing the batteries is not only time consuming, at some point in time, there will be missing data. This is also an element to consider in health and well-being, especially. So wearables powered with tattoos allow for more data at the point of care and enhance patient adherence to healthcare treatment, treatments, which is of course critical for the success of those treatments. But when we also think of livestock management, wearables powered with tattoos allow for real-time behavior analysis and then better health management of your cattle. And last but not least, uh, in the field of infrastructure and environment and smart homes, smart factories or smart cities, tattoos allows for uh, reducing energy consumption, increased safety and security, enhanced comfort at work and at home, improve the capacity utilization, and here also to consider the upgrading of legacy equipment and to cut emissions. And then here reaching a remote sensor to change the battery is often much more costly than the battery itself. So this can also be an element to consider when making a decision about the power source. And sensors powered with tattoos allow for a seamless user experience while keeping cost on track. So to have an overview, tattoos is a fully printable polymer energy storage technology, which enables flexibility because it's based on thin film organic polymers, which has a offers a tailorable cell design. It's sustainable and safe because it has no harmful materials or toxic metals. It's a cell to be solution, so you can design ultra thin devices and ultra flat applications like Ines shows. And rechargeability is also a very key factor of our technology and allows for a long life cycle of this power source. The focus we have is on moderate energy density because of the characteristics of the technology. And because it is printable, it offers seamless integration and economy of scale. So be it for engineers or designers that are working on designing and manufacturing smart devices, the key drivers for selecting this kind of technology are the rechargeability, the scalable production, no toxic substances in the materials, the design freedom that the technology offers together with a seamless integration and flexibility. And this is the uh, latest development 
together with uh, the company Invisible. And here you can see our ultra thin and flexible battery tattoos that is integrated into the uh, smart device. And now I think I can transfer to the colleagues of Invisible and they will tell you more about this technology. Thank you, Carolina. Let me share back my screen. There were many, many questions during your presentation, very interesting questions, some of them um, technical, some of them more related with sustainability. And I see that also some of those questions have been answered. Keep sending your questions in on, on keep typing them in, please, um, on the Q&A tab that you have. And um, if any questions remain unanswered, we will have, again, a Q&A live session at the end of our presentations. Okay. And now um, we are going to uh, pass it over to Tommy Halunk, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Invisible. Um, Carolina has given a brilliant presentation on a battery technology and she has also shown you uh, the integration of that battery uh, with our own display technology at Invisible. Tommy will be speaking exactly about uh, the integration of different printed electronic components into integrated systems and, um, and how can how that can uh, really create new product form factors. Tommy, over to you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, happy to be with you here today and uh, presenting. So let's see. So I hope you see my, my screen. And um, invisible. In comparison to Evonik and to, to Rice, is really a, a startup and a small company. But although being a startup, we are a truly multinational company with our headquarters in Canada, um, where uh, we also have our investor relations uh, based in Vancouver. And down in Portugal, where we have Elisha. Uh, where we have Ines, um, we have our prototyping services and consulting services and the perfect place to do prototypes and these things. And here where I'm located and you can see be behind me here, we have our production line where we can scale up uh, any printed electronic uh, components or systems into high volume. And um, this is where we, we are going uh, where we are using this technology now to, to help other companies as well as scaling up our uh, display technology. And in Germany, in Freiburg, we have our R&D capabilities, uh, looking into our materials and ink uh, to be printable and to, to have a high performance. Um, and just as the title of this webinar series, Making Things Alive, that is also our vision at Invisible. Um, our vision is to bring printed surfaces that is surrounding us in our everyday to, to life. And to do that in a natural and, and simple way. And using the electrochromic technology, we can actually enable the visual interface of the Internet of Things. And here you see an early example of a demonstrator and prototype that is made by, by Invisible. And I'm showing it since it's very nice and it's still very, very popular whenever we show it. And it's also a perfect example of an electrochromic display with an integrated to a system with other electronics components. So we are a printed electronics company, but our core is really the electrochromic display. And it has several advantages. And I'm showing you here on the screen that it's really thin. 
and it's lightweight and it's truly, truly flexible as well. And it has a variety of shapes where you can see. And this makes the display very suitable for multiple different application. And also it's very robust, it won't break. So it's really fun to work with such, such a well-performing display technology. And the display technology we have can be used hundreds of thousands of time and be reversible. And this is perfect for health and, and well-being, looking into perhaps med tech application, as well as retail and other more simple consumer electronic products. But it's also available as irreversible, that it's showing off only one time. And this is, of course, excellent for different um, security purposes and fast-moving consumer goods and quality assurance. And perfectly suitable also then for being disposable and, and put into high volumes and lower costs. And this is an example where you could see the irreversible display in, a, in an application as an impact label. And one of the key features of our display technology is that it's printable. And it can be printed in quite regular print house environment. And this allows you to also move this technology out to different places around the globe, which is perhaps highlighted very much today when we're living in a pandemic situation. And you look into as a company that you should have multiple sources for production. And the picture here is showing our print facility down in Portugal, where Ines is right now. And it's, as I said, perfectly suited for doing prototypes and demonstrators. So let's talk a bit about examples of printed electronic systems and electrochromic displays, and also focusing a bit and connecting to Ivonic's uh, talk right before me here on the energy source. And our display really has a low power consumption. And this is a key driver for us that we can allow just a few microwatts to, to drive this display and consume very, very little energy. And that is a key in almost all applications. And then using the, this new tattoos uh, um, battery, is for us a brilliant solution where we make use of the form factor. And here's the first video of it, where we show this in a rechargeable way. Here you can see that the um, display is not turned on. Uh, what do you do? Yes, you recharge the battery in just a few seconds. And after recharging, the battery really retains the energy. And the recharging can be done in multiple different places, and in production, during the logistic chain, in the retail, and even by the end user. And recharging could be done in several ways, of course, wirelessly, as you see, but also using solar cells, for example. So talking about systems, I want to show one example of a display structure and a printed electronics hybrid system. So how do you create these types of product? Well, you start with some type of substrate and then, oops, we print the silver conductors. And after that, you might print the carbon ink and you print the electrolyte and you print an electrochromic layer. And in this case, we also print a mask to create the pattern. And here you have the displays, and then you also add some conventional electronics as a chip and the sensor. And in this case, you also mount a battery and a graphical layer. And there you are, and you have created a product. And this is actually a product that looks like this. 
and it's actually available and for real. It really functions. But it's also possible now when you have these type of new materials emerging that Evonik has created, that you can actually do part of this and get rid of some of the assembly processes and having even lower costs and more efficient production where you use the same material set for parts of the display and the energy source. And let's see, you print electrolyte and the second electrolyte layer. I wanted us to show that we printed it the same electrolyte layer, but my technician said that, Tommy, let's wait until it's perfectly fine tuned for, for that. And then you print on the other layers and the sample and the graphical layer, and you have this fully functional system, almost all printed. And we start to see more and more of these completely printed products and systems. And for both fully printed and hybrid systems, uh, we have the delivery capability of producing roll-to-roll -roll high volume production, as well as quality assurance in our roll-to-roll -roll testing equipment and converting as well. So we deliver today commercial products from Invisible in this uh, production line and help other companies scaling up. Here I show two examples of uh, printed pr products that is made here in our production line. One is a humidity sensor from Invisense and the other is an organic photovoltaic from, from EpiShine. So our business model as shown also by Ines is really about having an emerging technology available for all companies, no matter what maturity stage you are at. We can help you all the way from design or from uh, ideation through design, prototyping and to scale up and production. And from there, even to tech transfer to other sites, if you want that. So being a small company, we have a great offering allowing us to work with any company at any maturity stage. So in addition to our, all our services, you can also get started on your own using our in-kits and display kits and start and play and learn how to use this display technology. And I think that you should do it soon because we at Invisible have this spring really felt that the printed electrochromic display is breaking through right now. So don't hesitate and don't wait. Get in touch with us and start using this fantastic technology. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tommy, for such an interesting presentation. I hope our audience liked it as well. Let me go back to sharing my screen. No, 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 not that one. I've seen that there have been lots of questions for Ivonic. Uh, some of them are very technical. Um, including energy capacity, um, recyclability issues and things like that. So um, I would encourage also people that have very specific questions about that technology to get in touch with Evonik directly um, and the tattoos team. Before we, we go into our Q&A session, I'd like to remind you about our next webinars. Um, so we have the fifth session of the Making Things Alive webinar series dedicated to investors, and this will be on June 9th. So this will be an, uh, an investor-focused webinar where we will review uh, the public information that has been released about Invisible in the, in the past few weeks. 
and also make our investors aware of, of what our future plans are. We will have a very special guest speaker uh, for that webinar, Raghu Das, who is the CEO of ID Tech Eggs, the main um, organization that provides market research and organizes events in the field of printed electronics. Just so you have an idea, ID Tech Eggs organized a webinar yesterday with nearly 2,000 attendees. And Tommy was actually part of, of that webinar yesterday. So you'll, you'll, you, you're being, <laughs> you, um, you are on full speed these two days, Tommy. Sure, so, sure. Uh, <laughs> June 9th is our investor target webinar. And then uh, we also would like to announce a, um, a webinar series, a new webinar series that Invisible will have the pleasure to host. And we are hosting this new webinar series with our, uh, with our partner Printocent because of the success of our own, well, own webinar series. So, and, and the first date for this printed intelligence webinar is going to be June 4th. So it's already next Thursday. So to register, please go to Printosent's um, webpage. It's right there, printosent.net. Uh, this webinar, this first webinar, will have speakers from VTT, Technical Research Center of Finland, MoveSol, Nokia. Our own CEO, Yanni Mikael, will be speaking as well and talking about the importance of these networks. Printosent really is a network of companies in the field of printed electronics and how bringing all these synergies together is so important to move the industry forward. And Printocent will be giving a, a, a talk as well. So this is already next Thursday and please do go to Printocent's website to register for that series. That will be the first session, but there will be more after the June 4th webinar. Okay, Tommy already talked to you about uh, our display and ink kit, so I, I will not uh, go over that. What I would like to do now is really, um, is really understand what questions have been. I will stop sharing my screen and maybe look at some of the questions here. There have been, there have been over 20 questions asked, lots of them again about uh, about Ivonic's tattoos technology, um, but some of them are related to other other topics. So I would go first into a question that was um, asked to. Let me just see here. Yeah. Okay. But there was a question to Bjorn, but I can't answer, I can't find it now. Yes, okay, Bjorn has answered it. Um, it was an interesting question though, and I, I, I'd like to, to bring it up to, to, the other, uh, to the other attendees in, in this webinar. So th the question was, what are the main market sectors for stretchable skin like electronics and displays? Bjorn, would you, would you like to answer that for the entire crowd? Yeah, well, I can try. I'm not a guru on the area. I'm just thinking that any kind of area where you want to um, have new types of form factors uh, where things are moving. So body, of course, body contact and skin contact. Um, but then, of course, if you have more flexibility in the materials that allows for different types of shapes and also potentially molding onto structures and one one area that i find very interesting is that you have robotic sensing robots that might be able to sense that you are in proximity so in order to avoid avoid uh, damaging you, you we're, we're moving in a direction where the robots and ai and everything is getting smarter uh, and, and and that kind of man machine interaction becomes more and more human-like so I think uh, robotic skin is an interest, e-skin or robotic skin might be an interesting field. Uh, but primarily I think uh, everything that's related to med tech on the body. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, I see other questions on, uh, again, very technical questions about the light transmission of our electrochromic displays. Um, the question about current capacity per square meter of the battery technology comes, keeps coming up as well. Uh, Carolina, would you like to say something about that technical feature or would you rather have people contact you later? I'll give you a reference so that uh, people can have a guess, but of course, because this is a tailorable solution, so we need to see uh, in the application itself uh, how it's going to work. Uh, and it's on, not only about the capacity, but it's also that you can use it, let's say, on cycles. So, but as a reference, our, our materials offer 0 0.3 million per hour per square centimeter. Okay, thank you, Carolina. Um, and, and to the point of the um, rechargeability, I would like to add that um, you can re reuse it, recharge it 160 times at least, that's what we do regularly and keeping 70 to 90% of the capacity. Thank you, thank you. So another question that is uh, directed to Invisible is any company have collaborated for commercial distribution of your products? So people want to know how we are distributing our technology and our products. And maybe I'll have uh, Yanni, our CEO, answer that. Yanni? Hi, everyone. I am um, nice to have a nice, strong audience again. So yes, my name is Yanni Mikhail Kuzista. I'm the CEO of Invisible. And um, yes, distribution of our products, our technologies, there are not that much public information out there. Uh, working with Tommy and the sales team to build that distribution network. If you have those kind of interests, do get in touch with us. There is a questionnaire at the end of the webinar session. Please fill that in, and there you can, you can mark if you want to contact Rise, uh, Ivonic, or us. But uh, where we are today in distribution is that we, we have the first distributors for our, our, our sample kits. Uh, we are working with uh, Electronics. They were in our last seminar. They have their own circuit scribe kit. And in that kit, you have our display technology. That's one, one example. But uh, we hope to have more news um, in the coming months regarding distributors of our technology. And of course, as Ines mentioned earlier, the ecosystems, the partnerships are very critical. So we have, we have partner companies who are showcasing our technology. Ivonic, as of this week, has started showcasing our technology. We're showcasing their technology. This is an emerging ecosystem, and this is how, how things work, is we, we have combining tech, we're combining technologies that are complementing to each other. It's in our interest to, to promote each other. But certainly, if you are interested, and we have a very diverse audience, so far we've had participants in the series from 45 countries, so if you want to start reselling in your region, get in touch. Thanks a lot, Jenny. Thank you. Um, there's a, a couple of questions here that are interesting because uh, there have been recent developments in Invisible's group. We just, we a few weeks ago completed the acquisition of the business of RDOT and people are curious to know if uh, RDOT displays uh, that they had uh, already some information on are the same technology uh, that Invisible is offering. So I'll, I'll let Tommy uh, answer that. Yes, um, as I said in my presentation, we have various different uh, display structures that we work with. And the RDOT um, display structure is, is one of them. So. Yes, we, we do offer that display structure as well. And uh, it's based very much on the RISE display structure. Um, so, and that one is, is really compatible with the production line that we have here in, in Sweden. So 
yes, it, it's the same display structure. And I saw that it was a question about the um, uh, display kit as, as well. And, and this is the display kit that you got from our from our dot a few weeks ago is, is still the same display kit available as well. Thank you, Tommy. Um, an interesting question here. How do we envision printed electronics and sensors implementation in sports? Who would like to answer that? Maybe it's a question for, for Bjorn, perhaps. Bjorn? Uh, I, but I, I can try a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, me, I and Bjorn were colleagues uh, just a couple of months ago, and uh, the, and I've been working with with uh, quite a lot of different uh, companies in sports uh, and also organizations in sports for different nations, wanting to get their athletes to perform the absolute best to win the gold medal. So then they foresee that they could have sensors on the athletes and measuring in real time and giving feedback in real time to the athletes. So uh, you learn to perform your movements in a perfect way to perform the really best that you can. So th this is a way where at least I, I have heard and, and understood that you could use sensors in uh, different types of sports. I don't know, Bjorn, if you want to complement that a bit or so. Yeah, I keep dreaming of having all the soccer teams having all the soles of their shoes with sensors so you can track the movement and such there's there's a billions of different opportunities in tracking both the state of things in the sport but also tracking the the players uh, health status etc sorry guys if i may also jump into this I, I i really love this question about sports because as in, in, our, in the automotive industry, you see that the race cars are a, a way to test a lot of new technology and introduce those. I see that for our printed technologies, sports is an, it's an excellent application space to, to test and then roll out to the wider population. So that's the beauty of our technology is that it will then roll out to high volume consumer uses. Thank you, Yanni. A um, few questions here also on colors, electrochromic colors. Invisible has released uh, news on a collaboration uh, about the topic of, of, of colors and uh, in, increasing the color palette of electrochromics. Bjorn has also talked a little bit about that and the, the development work that is underway in RISE uh, on that topic. And in fact, in our, in our first webinar uh, of this series, there is a very interesting presentation from one of our partners, Georgia Tech, on this very topic. So I would, I would strongly recommend um, people to go check that out as well on YouTube. Um, so, we, have, we, we still have a few open questions here, but I see that we are getting to uh, our time. We will answer all of them. Don't worry, we'll get in touch with you and answer those. You'll also have an opportunity to, to ask more questions on the survey that we will send after closing this, uh, this session. And with that, uh, I would then encourage you to again follow us on social media check out the new webinar that is going uh, to be again focused on investors on june 9th check out also and register for the webinar series that's starting next thursday june the 4th uh, for print Scent, and follow us on our social media we thank you for joining us it's been a pleasure being here thank you for all your questions your interest and thank you to all our speakers who, who gave uh, amazing talks and amazing information to move this, this industry forward. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.